Assalamualaikum wabarakatuh. Uh, terima kasih saya ucapkan uh, pertama-tama pada Dr. Nur Hidayah ya, yang uh, pada kesempatan hari ini uh, memberikan waktu luangnya untuk sharing ya sama uh, kita terutama di bidang risk ya di air pollution uh, apa mengenai air pollution dan modeling ya. Uh, dan mungkin nanti materinya akan di deliver in English ya. In English. Uh, mau English ataupun mix? Uh, mix, oke okay, nggak apa-apa. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, mix, English pun boleh, apa-apa. mix pun boleh. Iya. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mungkin nanti akan di deliver dalam bahasa Inggris dan uh, ada bahasa Malaysia nya juga ya. Insya Allah kita mah mengerti lah satu rumpun ya. Iya. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Saya minta mungkin uh, apa namanya kepada uh, adik-adik semua gitu uh, digunakan waktunya karena uh, terus terang kan kemarin di materi ARL tentang air pollution uh, tidak tidak disinggung ya maksudnya tidak disinggung secara mendalam jadi tolong di uh, ya di pra, di simak gitu uh, apa namanya sharing ilmunya gitu saya juga mau belajar nih sama Dokter Nur Hidayah ya gitu dan jangan uh, sungkan atau hesitasi gitu untuk bertanya sesuatu. Kalaupun misalnya masih dalam materi, kalian bisa mencet di kolom chat ya uh, pertanyaannya apa. Uh, kemudian nanti uh, untuk tugasnya kalian uh, membuat resume ya uh, kuliah hari ini materi hari ini uh, dan uh, mohon semuanya on cam ya. Jadi uh, dalam mengikuti kuliah ini tolong Uh, kameranya dinyalakan ya, jadi jangan uh, off gitu dinyalakan kameranya, kemudian uh, apa namanya uh, mengisi daftar hadir ya, baik ya, jadi uh, tolong semuanya dinyalakan ya kameranya. <tuh> Nyalakan, mic-nya dimatikan tapi kameranya nyala ya, uh, jadi Uh, absennya nanti saya akan lihat dari berdasarkan on camnya ya. Oke okay, baik, uh, mungkin untuk mempersingkat waktu saya persilakan ya uh, Ibu Nur Hidayah ya, saya panggilnya Ibu saja ya, <laughs> Ibu Nur Hidayah untuk menyampaikan uh, materinya uh, sila, uh, dipersilakan. Sebentar ya. Uh, ya. Tolong semuanya on cam ya. Yes. Okay, boleh dilihat screen saya. Terlihat, terlihat. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Nahidaya Binti Abdul from uh, University of Malaysia, Pahang. Now uh, I'm a senior lecturer at the Faculty of Industrial Science and Technology at uh, University of Malaysia, Pahang, also in Malaysia. Okay. Uh, my, okay, a little bit uh, explanation, introductions of myself. Okay, so... Uh, I'm graduated from University of Malaysia Terengganu in Environmental Engineering for degree and uh, master degree and for the uh, for the PhD. Uh, I uh, I was graduated from Kyoto University. Same with uh, uh, Dr. Ani, Dr. Sofia, and Dr. Fajri. Okay, so we uh, we actually we are friends. Okay. Uh, in uh, Kyoto University. Okay, so uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me as a guest lecturer for the topic of uh, that related to evolution. Okay, so this uh, today uh, I'm going to uh, share with you. 
okay, uh, about the environmental risk analysis of uh, on air pollution control and modeling. Okay, so okay, so uh, as for the introduction, okay, as we know, uh, the air pollution that uh, nowadays it be a world largest uh, environmental health threat because of uh, more than seven million deaths for every year. It means that uh, the 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 uh, the death uh, due to the air pollution increasing year by year. Okay, and then okay, so this statistic is actually from uh, United Nations of Economic Councils Europe. Uh, okay, so this is uh, uh, the statistic for uh, this year. And then when we go to the uh, WHO, okay, World Health Organization, uh, this organization claim that the exposure to air pollution can cause more important risk factors for major non-communicable diseases. Okay, so non-communicable diseases like uh, lower respiratory, lung cancer, lower respiratory, and also, you know, it can be asthma, especially among the children, okay? And then uh, when we go to the, another statistic, okay? So uh, it comes from the Institute for uh, Health Metrics and Evaluation uh, in 2018. Okay, so the air pollution can be the most cause of the death. So it can be ranked number four and five. Okay, basic uh, four for the lower respiratory and five for the lung cancer. So basically, number one, it can be, you know, can be uh, obesity or the diabetes. So for the air pollution, it falls on, uh, for the rank number four and five. And then for the most cause of the premature death, okay? So it also um, falls uh, for the rank number four and five. Okay, so if we look at to the, the statistics, the changes from 2007 until to uh, 2017, the number of the, uh, the deaths and the premature deaths increased year by year. Okay, so in, uh, within 10 years, it increased 17%. Okay, so based on this, uh, this statistic, I would say that the air pollution must be controlled. Okay, so it be the the most important environmental risk. So in this case, uh, I think it is uh, um, uh, suitable to the, the, to the topics. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, Dr. 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 Sophia, am I recording? Stop me. Yeah, the recording, memang. Oh, okay. Yeah. But this, uh, this I, uh, recording stop. Oh, recording stop. Live YouTube. Jadi nanti masuknya ke YouTube langsung. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Daya, uh, Gomen itu apa? Slide-nya bisa di slideshow. Oh, dibesarkan. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sudah lama tidak beri lecture. <laughs> Cuti. <laughs> Okay, can you see? Yes. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, if you look at the picture here, uh, I would say that this is um, uh, air pollution sources. Okay, so first, uh, volcanic er uh, eruption. Okay, in Malaysia, we do not have the volcanic eruption, but in Indonesia, I do believe that uh, all of you are very familiar with the uh, volcanic eruption, so it can be one of the important sources for air pollution, especially in uh, Indonesia. Am I right, Dr. Sofia? Or Dr. Yes. Ani? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. So, uh, yeah. uh, so this is um, right, the sec. Where is my cursor? Okay, so this is uh, this uh, picture shows the uh, land use. Okay, so if you uh, can see here, the farmers burn the, the, the agricultural waste, so it can be the sources of the air pollution. And of course, this one is the uh, industrial plant. 
Okay, so the industrial plant, it can be the most uh, uh, sources, uh, important sources for the air pollution. And then this one, it comes from the traffic. Okay, Dr. Anisan, Dr. Sofia, and Dr. Fajri, if you remember, this is a... Uh, Kawaramachi. Kyoto. Yeah, Kawaramachi. Kawaramachi photo. Okay, so this, uh, I would say that the traffic can be one of the sources of the air pollution. Okay, so uh, when we talk about the risk, okay, so normally we can uh, refer to the risk management. Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, I will uh, I will say that um, the the steps, okay, uh, the steps for uh, risk analysis. Where is uh, where is the I mean which step? risk analysis can be uh, integrated into the uh, framework of uh, risk management for ecosystem risk. Okay, so for the risk assessment or for the risk management, we refer to ISO 31000, okay? Uh, International uh, Standards of Organization. Okay, so if you look at here, the step number one, establish the management context. Okay, so what are we are trying to achieve and who is responsible for achieving it? Okay, in this case, in terms of the air pollution, okay, so what is our goal? Like, um, how much we want to reduce the emissions from the, uh, for example, from the industry, okay, from the uh, traffic emission, and then who is responsibility, uh, who is, uh, who has a responsible, uh, responsibility for achieving it? Okay, for example, uh, uh, environmentalists or governmental, uh, agencies, authority bodies. So we have to know who is the uh, who has a responsibility to reduce the risk. And then we go to the risk assessment. Okay. Okay. So if you look at here, uh, risk analysis it fall under the risk ass risk assessment. Okay. First, risk identification. Uh, uh, number two, the risk identification. Okay. Here it means that we identify the hazard. Okay, what kind of the hazard that you, that you want to analyze? Okay, in this case, uh, for example, uh, in terms of the air pollution, uh, like uh, we identify uh, the air pollutants. So it can be the uh, hazard. Okay, so uh, based on the air pollutants, what kind of the air pollutants that we want to reduce, that we want to study? Okay, for example, uh, carbon dioxide, methane, uh, or... Uh, or any uh, ozone or any air pollutants, okay? And number three, risk and uh, step number three, uh, risk analysis. Okay, so basically risk analysis, okay, it comes after the risk identification, hazard identification. Okay, so after we identify the hazard, we have to, uh, to know, we have to evaluate what kind, uh, what is the level of the, uh, the air pollutants, okay? Uh, how much the people, what is the level uh, of the, uh, the air pollutants and then how about the exposure of, of people to the air pollutants? Okay, so basically uh, at the uh, risk, uh, risk analysis, okay, so we can analyze, uh, we use the, the, the instrumentation, we use a software or we use uh, data collections to get, the, to get the data, to sample the data. I mean to sample the uh, data for air Pollutions, as for example, and then for the risk evaluation. Okay, so for the risk evaluation, do we need to add to reduce the risk event? Okay, it means that we characterize the the risk. Okay, in terms uh, as we, uh for example, we determine the severity of the exposure to the air pollutants, the magnitude of the uh, of the risk. Okay. As for example, for the uh, human health risk assessment, we can determine the uh, hazard quotients, uh, hazard index of the of the pollutants. Okay, and then uh, number five, a uh, step, uh, steps number five, risk treatment. Okay, so after we determine the risk characteristics, the level of risk, we can propose the control measure. As for example, uh, in industry. Okay, so for the particulate matters, uh, particulate matters that emit from the uh, from the stack emission, 
uh, okay, from the side uh, of industry, we can propose to use the back filters or we can uh, propose uh, to combine the back filters with the other, uh, other uh, pollution control technology. Okay, in order to ensure that the uh, air quality standards, air quality permit the, uh, the standards, I mean the emission uh, from the industry permit the standards that that set by the government. Okay, so if you look at here, uh, communication and the consultations. Okay, so here, uh, uh, okay, so for example, in industry, after we, uh, uh, we determine the level of risk and then we propose the control measures and then we have to submit uh, our, uh, our uh, as for example our industry okay our industry reports to the government to the stakeholders okay and then uh, another examples like the uh, hazards uh, hazard release okay uh, Okay, in Malaysia, especially, uh, okay, saya bagi contoh di Malaysia, contohnya Petronas. Petronas, that can be considered as a high-risk industry. Okay, uh, in Malaysia, what they do is, after they do the, uh, the, the, the uh, risk uh, assessment, okay, they will uh, uh, give a, uh, a talk to the community about the about the possibility of hazards of the hazard release to the community and then now we go to the review and monitoring okay so i would say that the uh, the risk management is a continual uh, improvement uh, process okay so after we uh, we determine the risk treatment okay so we have to uh, implement uh, management plan for the risk okay so here risk assessment okay uh, it can be a human health and ecological uh, risk okay so uh, it can be the risk assessment okay so sudah berubah ya Okay, so um, what is the air pollution modeling? Uh, saya tak tahu sama ada Dr. Uh, Sofia sudah explain belum di dalam kelas, but then uh, I love to explain what is the air pollution modeling actually. Okay, so the air pollution modeling, it used the mathematical and numerical techniques to uh, simulate the physical and chemical processes that affect air pollutants as they disperse and react in the atmosphere. Okay, so it is referred to the US EPA. Okay, so when we talk about the modeling, of course, we have to use the mathematical and the numerical techniques. It means that we use the numbers, okay, to, to, create, uh, to, to create or to simulate the the process okay so in terms of the evolutions we simulate the physical and chemical processes okay physical processes like um, we simulate the wind direction uh, wind speed the solar radiation atmospheric stability and then the chemical processes like okay so for example like uh, ozone okay so we simulate the uh, ozone formations uh, and then uh, we uh, we can see the dispersions of the uh, pollutants in environment in the air. Okay, and then uh, the functions of the air pollution modeling to understand, to investigate, to assess and regulate the quality of the atmospheric environment and distributions of the toxic pollutants. Okay, so air pollution modeling. Okay, it needs uh, uh, it uh, it has uh, intercorrelated with the ecological factors. Okay, so uh, next is uh, land uh, land topography. Okay, topography. So we want to talk about the uh, air pollution modeling. Okay, it must relate to the uh, topography. But I do believe that for the water pollution, uh, for the water modeling, it also need the uh, the, uh, the topography, okay, and then the land use, 
okay, it can also use for the industrial uh, emission and then the uh, chemical emissions. Okay, so the needs of the air pollution modeling. Okay, kenapa kita perlukan air pollution modeling? Because that is a regulatory requirement, uh, engineering assessment and hazardous release. Okay, so for the regulatory requirement, so uh, like we want to uh, comply to the air quality standards. Okay, so for your information, uh, now we have a new air pollution uh, air quality standards that that uh, released that published by the WHO. Okay, so they published, if I'm not mistaken, in 2020. Uh, okay, and then. Uh, Toxic air pollutant standards to and then to develop the mitigation strategies. Okay, if you uh, refer to these uh, figures, okay, so we can propose the uh, mitigation strategies based on the uh, air pollution modeling, based on the uh, based on the uh, results of the air pollution modeling. Okay, uh, if let's say the NOx emissions from the uh, from the stack okay it uh, it did not comply to the air quality standard so here we have to propose the we have to develop the uh, mitigation strategies so what kind of the function control technologies that suitable for the NOx emissions okay and then engineering assessment uh, for the site planning and then for the emission control okay site planning I would say that uh, it can be related to the environmental impact assessment, EIA. Okay, uh, so uh, based on the EIA report, EIA assessment. So uh, for the specific site or for the specific uh, project, proposed project, the uh, the project needs to uh, to to use the uh, to propose the engineering assess, uh, engineering control. Okay, sebagai contoh, uh, we want to develop a, a, a factory. Contoh ya, okay, we want to develop a new factory ataupun extend a new, uh, extend the factory processes and then uh, based on the environmental impact assessment, uh, so uh, the the emissions from the industry would be uh, uh, exceed the air quality standard. So in this case, we can use the uh, engineering control uh, to reduce the, uh, the possible uh, emissions from the new plant. Okay, and then for the emission control and then hazardous release. Okay, so based on the uh, air pollution model, okay, we can use as for the emergency response planning. Okay, in Malaysia. Okay, uh, saya tak tahu di, uh, di Indonesia ada ke tidak sampai berita ini in 2017, if I'm not mistaken, ataupun in 2018, uh, kes di di Johor Bahru di Sungai King King uh, ada uh, ada app, uh, ada case uh, ada satu case di mana uh, para pelajar di sekolah ramai yang muntah-muntah uh, vomit okay and then uh, they have uh, uh, difficulty in breathing okay so after investigation uh, the government found that it caused by the uh, the illegal dumping I mean the illegal dumping of the toxic pollutants into the river then the toxic Then the toxic pollutants release or uh, evaporate into the uh, atmosphere. Okay, and then the uh, the toxics compound inhaled by the uh, by the by the uh, people by the pupils. Okay, so uh, and then one of uh, one of the effort to control the the hazardous release. Okay. So, uh, if I'm not mistaken, University Technology Malaysia, yeah, they use uh, air pollution model, which is air mod, okay, to to simulate uh, the the the. Uh, I mean, uh, they try to simulate 
what, uh, how uh, from I mean uh, daripada sources of the uh, illegal dumping seberapa luas the radius of the pollutants can go. Okay, so they uh, simulate use the uh, amount by you. Uh, so the the parameters like um, wind speed, wind directions, and also the toxic itself, toxic chemical itself. Okay, so based on the uh, based on the uh, US EPA, okay, so they uh, divide the type of air pollution modeling. Okay, first is a dispersion model, number two is a receptor model, and then number three is a photochemical model. Okay, so for the dispersion model, uh, the purpose is to estimate the concentrations of the pollutants at specific ground level receptors surrounding and emission sources. Okay, so uh, basically uh, for the dispersion model, a common dispersion model is a Gaussian model, Gaussian dispersion, uh, Gaussian dispersion model. Okay, itu banyak digunakan. Okay, the Gaussian dispersion model. And then for the receptor models, okay, so uh, it used to uh, to characterize the physical chemi uh, physical and chemical characteristics of air pollutants at the uh, at the sources and the receptors, and then. Uh, to identify the presence of and to quantify the sources contributions to receptor concentrations. Okay, sebagai so contoh, uh, we characterize uh, the concentrations of the air pollutants uh, like uh, uh, sulfur dioxide, and then uh, and then we determine how much the uh, uh, sulfur dioxide inhaled by the uh, by the uh, by the people. Okay, and then uh, next is a photo uh, photochemical <coughs> model to estimate the pollutant concentrations and the deposition of uh, both inert and chemically reactive pollutants over large spatial scales. Okay, so yeah, it needs bagai contoh it suitable for the uh, uh, transboundary pollutants, long range transports of the pollutants. Sebagai contoh, kita nak tengok pergerakan uh, dari uh, pergerakan uh, chemicals ataupun pollutants from one country to another countries. Okay, sebagai contoh juga, let's say haze. Okay, haze. So kita boleh tengok uh, haze daripada sesuatu negeri. So how it can be uh transports to the other countries okay and then the air pollution modeling processes okay so this is uh, basically the the process uh involved for modeling i mean for the air pollution modeling okay so here we need the background concentrations of the pollutants meteorological conditions sources data okay so here background concentrations of pollutants it is uh, important because of uh, in calculating the air pollution emitted from the from the sources, we have to know the background concentrations of the pollutants. So kita nak tengok sama ada uh, kita nak tengok berapa banyak yang uh, uh, if let's say we have a concentrations of the uh, ozone 0 0.01 ppm. Okay, that is a measured concentration. And then the background concentration, 0 0.005 ppm. So we can see how much uh, the, the actual concentrations of ozone uh, that emitted from the, from, uh, as for example, from the industry, from the, from, uh, I mean, the, from uh, the anthropogenic activities. Okay. And then, uh conditions okay so meteorological condition as i mentioned before it's actually uh, reflect to the uh, physical activities okay as for example for the wind speed the higher the wind speeds it means that the uh, the dispersions of the pollutants can be uh, i mean the radius of the dispersions of the pollutants can be greater Okay, and then uh, solar radiation. 
uh, okay, sebagai contoh, uh, the chemical uh, activities of the pollutant is high compared, uh, is high in a daytime compared uh, nighttime. Okay, because of uh, solar radi uh, solar solar radiation. Okay, because of the solar radiation, uh, it can provide the heat. So the heat can uh, increase the reactions of the chemicals in the atmospheres. Okay, and then the sources data, site description, and emission rate. Okay, site description. Okay, so bagi contoh, uh, uh, the mountain. Okay, ataupun uh, valley. Okay, so uh, in air pollution modeling processes, we have to uh, consider this uh, this uh, topography because uh, as for, uh, as for example for the uh, dispersion. Okay, if let's say uh, adanya uh, mountain. Okay, so it will. Uh, you know, they akan menghalang the dispersion of the pollutants. Okay, and then uh, another so, uh, examples like the uh, okay, saya so tunjuk contoh ya. Okay, so if you look at here, this is a built environment. Boleh tengokkan slide saya, uh, slide introduction sekarang ni? Yeah. Okay, so in this case, uh, the air pollutants emit from the traffic. Okay. So if you look at here, with my case, okay. If you look at here, uh, there are high buildings, okay. In uh, this structure, we call it as a uh, street canyon, okay. So the emissions from the traffic, I mean from vehicle emission, uh, vehicle movement, okay. So I would say that this condition can be a pocket of the of the environment. I mean. Uh, you know, kalau you tengok dekat sini, high structure, so the uh, so the mixing is, uh, uh, the mixings of the air pollutants is not good. Uh, I'm not, okay, sorry, the mixing is very good because of, you know, um, this structure do not allow uh, ataupun the 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 contributions uh, of air uh, air movement from outside of the street canyon is less so i would say that the air pollution in the in this uh, design is very hard sebab tak ada pun uh, dilutions from the outside of the structure okay can you get uh, my point sebab structure dia tinggi i mean the building is high so uh, udara, uh, air from the other side is, uh, I mean, the diffusion of the air, uh, air flow from the other side is very low. So that the air pollution inside the street canyon is high. Okay. So that is uh, for the topography. And then <clears throat> the dispersion pyramid. Uh, okay, emission rate. Okay, so for the emission rate, uh, for for example, the stack okay, from the stack. Okay, so we have to know what is the uh, emission velocity. Uh, how much? Uh, I mean, uh, we can calculate uh, how much the. I mean, uh, how many kilos of uh, or how many tons of the pollutants emitted uh, per year from the stack. So we have to know the emission rate. Okay, so in this case we have to know the emission activities. Okay, and then, tadi saya sampai mana ya? Okay, model options. Okay, as for example, receptor grids. So here, we have to know the skills of the, uh, of the air pollution modeling. Okay, uh, sama ada, we want to choose a micro skill, macro skills, uh, okay, micro skills is like uh, less than uh, 100 meters. Macro skills, it can be, you know, uh, that is a macro, large, large scale. It can be a, uh, 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 the transport, uh, I mean, it can be uh, dispersion, ataupun it can be the uh, uh, long range transportation, uh, transports of the 
uh, of the pollutants. So receptive bit, it refer to the scales of the uh, dispersion at the point transportation of the pollutants. Dispersion parameters like um, a horizontal or vertical, and then we have to know the uh, uh, the X, Y, Z of the uh, dispersion. Okay, lepas ni saya akan tunjuk uh, contoh Gaussian dispersion. So, uh, uh, from that figure, we can see the dispersion parameters. And then the local topography features. Okay, so uh, it's uh, similar to the uh, site description. Okay, so based on these input, okay, it's, uh, it's actually input, yeah. Uh, so, we next we can we can determine what is the uh, suitable uh, approach and modeling for uh, for the process. Okay, so yang ini kita akan tentukanlah sebagai contoh uh, kita nak pilih dispersion model ataupun photochemical model or receptor models. Okay, and then uh, in this case uh, adalah dispersion model. Okay, so that is a data processing. And then the stage number three, data output, we can predict the ground level concentrations of pollutants. Okay, uh, you have to remember the Gaussian dis uh, the dispersion models is actually only suitable for the ground level concentrations of the pollutants. Okay, kalau uh, untuk for the uh, upper level of the concentrations of the uh, of the pollutant, that is not suitable by using the uh, dispersion model. Probably we can use a photochemical modeling. Okay, so this is the output. Okay, data output. So after we simulate the conditions, so we can predict the concentrations of the pollutants, and then. Uh, data analysis uh, stage four, which is we can compare to the monitoring data. Okay, so to compare the monitoring data, uh, so uh, in this case we can check the validity of the uh, model uh, of the uh, evolution modeling. So in uh, for example, we can check the uh, uh, fractional bias of the data. Uh, index of agreement of the data. So, yeah, ini saya akan explain lepas ni. Okay, and then assess the potential environmental and health impact uh, of uh, caused by the air pollution. Okay, so uh, in this uh, for the stage number four, uh, we uh, as, uh, for example we can check the uh, health risk assessment uh, uh, among the people who exposed to the uh, to the air pollution. Saya punya slide stuck. Okay, so this is a dispersion model. As I mentioned before, a common dispersion model adalah Gaussian dispersion model. Okay, so this is a uh, diagram for the uh, dispersion model. Okay, so for the uh, when we talk about the modeling, of course we have to. Uh, look at to the assumptions of the modeling. Okay, sebagai contoh, sebelum kita nak decide uh, which uh, modeling uh, that we want to use, we have to uh, check the assumption of the uh, of the model. Is that uh, suitable for the condition that we want to create, that we want to simulate? Okay, so uh, for the Gaussian dispersion model, the assumption is R, uh, we can assume that the steady state condition. Okay, sebagai contoh di sini, uh, I would say that the uh, the sources uh, emission, uh, the strength of the sources emission is constant. So, sebagai contoh, uh, dalam masa, sebagai contoh ya, dalam masa satu jam, the emission rate adalah constant. Okay, the velocity of the emission is a constant. Yeah. And then the wind speed, wind direction, and the diffusion characteristics of the uh, uh, plume are constants. Okay, so uh, it's similar. Uh, okay, so kalau you tengok dekat sini, steady state condition. Okay, so we will talk about the steady state condition. Of course, we re uh, it relate to the wind speed, wind direction. Okay, so uh, 
in this case mean speed and the wind directions adalah constant. Sebagai contoh dalam masa satu jam, one hour, the wind speed adalah uh, constant. For example, uh, 1.5 uh, meter per second. Yeah, and then the mass uh, mass transfer due to bulk motion in the uh, x directions far outshadow the contributions due to mass diffusion. Okay, so kalau kita tengok dekat sini x yeah x uh, axis adalah uh, for the uh, bulk motion adalah uh, I mean uh, more uh, uh, overshadow the contribution due to the mass diffusion. Okay, so kalau you tengok dekat sini, uh, kenapa saya cakap uh, bug motion? Okay, so ini bug motion from here. Okay, and then it disperses in a bug condition. Rather than mass diffusion, mass diffusion, you know, mass uh, the diffusion that is a uh, slow movement of the pollutants. Okay, so that is why bug motion dia bergerak, the pollutants bergerak dalam uh, in a bulk so dia uh, so it is uh, uh, dominant dominant directions okay no chemical transformation take place okay so i will say that the gaussian dispersion dispersion model that is a physical uh, physical movement that is a physical uh, for, uh, physical uh, modeling so there are no chemical transformation uh, take place. Wind speeds are should more than one meter per second. Okay, so this suitable for uh, okay. So uh, the Gaussian model it not suitable for the uh, stable atmospheric condition. Okay, so when what when we talk about the uh, dispersion model, uh, one of the factor one of the uh, consideration important consideration adalah uh, atmospheric stability okay kenapa uh, wind speed should be more than one meter per second okay if let's say uh, the wind speed less than one meter per second so kejap ya saya bagi contoh okay so if let's say uh, Dr. P. Uh, Sofia, saya tengah share paint. Boleh tengok tak? Itu masih di slide PowerPoint saya. Uh, Dr. Ani, Ani San, Dr. Ani atau Dr. Fajri, can you see yes, that? Yes, yes, atau, yes. Boleh ya? Okay. So tadi kalau uh, wind speed more than uh, one meter per second, okay, so dia akan jadi the the dispersion could uh, will be like this, okay. But when the wind speed Lower than. Oh, oh, sorry, Daya. Yeah. You uh, cannot see. Are, are you presenting something? Yeah. Different. Different. different not PPT. Uh, say. Uh, no. Uh, I use oh. the paint. Ah, no. We no. cannot see your. Oh. Ah, okay, okay. Now, now, okay. now it's fine. Okay. Boleh eh? nampak ya? Paint. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so if let's say here, this is uh, one, uh, if the wind speed more than one meter per second. Okay, so the uh, plume pattern, plume dispersion like this. But when the wind speed less than one meter per second, yeah, the pattern of the air dispersion is like, you know, like this, because of the, this condition is a very stable atmospheric condition. So, you know, disebabkan udara sangat perlahan, uh, setiada so pergerakan, bukan tiada pergerakan angin, pergerakan uh, angin adalah sangat perlahan, so that, you know, 
the the pollutants just directly go to the uh, straight to the atmosphere. I mean, tiada pun uh, there are no dispersion. Tak ada dispersion. Okay. So that is why for the uh, air pollution uh, for the ocean dispersion model, uh, one of the factor adalah important factor adalah wind speed. It must be more than one meter per second. Okay, Let me share. Okay, now I'm back to the slide. Can you see my slide? Oh, not yet there. Not yet? Yeah. Um, let me see you share. Okay. Can you see your slide? Yeah. Okay, um, but the limitations for uh, Gaussian dispersion model, uh, it, uh, the predictions of uh, pollutant concentration limited uh, limited to predicting for, uh, concentrations more than uh, 50 meter downwind. Uh, so, maksudnya, the scale must be just within 50 meters. Okay, if uh, more than 50 meters, I would say that the accuracy of the predictions will be lower. Okay, so this is an example of the uh, question. Okay, so this is a list of the software. Okay, uh, now we are talking about the Gaussian models. Okay, it's like a K line, highway, car FMI, OSPM, operational street pollution model, car park. Okay, so basically this is for the traffic uh, emission model. So, kalau untuk, uh, untuk uh, I mean the basic ataupun the common Gaussian model, uh, sebagai contoh adalah air mod. Okay, so uh, many industry use the air mod model for uh, for modeling their uh, uh, air pollution. And then, uh, for example, CFD models. Okay, so when we talk about the CFD, uh, it must relate to the fluid dynamics. Okay, so CFD means that the compositional fluid dynamics model. Uh, normally, uh, it's suitable for a small grid, uh, small scales of the simulation. As for example, within one meters, within uh, five meters. Okay, for you know. It very small uh, scales, but uh, uh, we can apply for the quite larger, quite large uh, scales. But we need to uh, amend, at the point we need to improve the uh, model, uh, modeling itself, the software itself. Okay, so now uh, case study. Okay, I I bring you a case study one. Okay, so sebagai contoh, characterizing near road air pollution, equal scale emission and the dispersion models and validation against in situ measurement. Okay, so for these journals, uh, I would like to highlight the dispersion models. Okay, so the dispersion, these papers actually, uh, they, they simulate the near road air pollution by using the SIREN, OSPM and k -Light. Klein, Klein model. Okay, so uh, so the methodology for this paper. Okay, first is a site selection. So these studies was conduct conducted uh, in Montreal, Canada. Uh, field data collections. Okay, so this uh, this research uh, uh, collect the uh, nitrogen dioxide concentrations near roadside. Uh, area okay field data processing okay so uh, field data processing they uh, they simulate uh, i mean they simulate the data okay so uh, they simulate the nox and also uh, the uh, meteorological condition the topography i mean the uh, street topography and then uh, they also use the uh, traffic characteristics like 
uh, uh, vehicles speed, vehicle count, vehicle, uh, the engine, uh, the engine uh, characteristics of the vehicles. And then, um, so they simulate the uh, the the uh, the, uh, the near road air pollution. Okay, so in this case, yeah, uh, they also consider the two types of the uh, uh, vehicles, which is the light duty vehicles, like uh, uh, such as um, uh, van, uh, the cars, and the heavy duty. Uh, vehicles like the uh, trucks, uh, lorries, okay, and then uh, traffic uh, and the emission simulation. Okay, so for this one, uh, this research use a MOVE MOVE uh, software, MOVE uh, MOVE uh, simulation to uh, simulate the emission characteristics of the of I mean the near road air pollution after they simulate the emission characteristics they use the emission uh, characteristic as the input for the um, <coughs> for the Special. dispersion modeling yeah for the dispersion modeling okay so the dispersion modeling they use uh, was uh, Serene OSPM and the Kline and then uh, the last one is a validation of the simulation results. Okay, so this one uh, they uh, used the uh, statistical uh, analysis to validate the simulation result. Okay, if you look at here, basically the method is actually similar to this uh, to this diagram. Okay, so we need the input. We need the data processing, the model, which is a serine, Kline, and the and the OSPM, and then the predictions of the uh, NO2 nitrogen dioxide, and then uh, data analysis. They uh, compare the data to the monitoring data, and also analyze the uh, the performance of the software. Okay, so we go to the. Uh, Dr. Sofia, sampai jam berapa ya? Sampai jam uh, 9.30 materinya. Nanti 30 menit uh, okay. uh, question. Tapi start. kalau misalnya lebih cepat ya nggak apa-apa. Okay. Mau cepat lagi ya? Uh, <laughs> terserah. <laughs> eh, dah ya. Okay. Masih banyak slide-nya atau gimana? Uh, okay, actually I have a four, uh, three case study. Tak apa, saya akan oh, yeah. terangkan hanya dua sahaja. Oh, yeah, baik. Okay. okay, so as I mentioned before, we will talk about the modeling. We have to look at the assumption. Okay, so OSPM, which is Operational Street Pollution Model. Okay, so this is a diagram for the uh, assumptions of the uh, OSPM model. Okay, so vortex means that in uh, in this area, the vortex condition will be occurred, which is a wind component uh, perpendicular to the street as it uh, uh, exits. Okay, leeward side receive contribution from the recirculation zone. Okay, leeward side here. Okay, so here there are recirculating air plus the background air pollution, and then plus the direct emissions from the bigger emission. So I would say that uh, the leeward side actually uh, will have a higher concentrations of the pollutants rather than the windward side. Okay. Windward side mainly receive contribution from the recirculated component plus urban background. Okay. So kalau kita tengok kat sini windward side, there are no uh, direct, uh, direct emissions from the vehicles. The direct contribution from within the recirculation zone, a plum model assuming linear dispersions of pollutants with the distance. Okay, so we, when we talk about the uh, traffic emission, that is a line dispersion model. Sebab apa line? Okay, jalan lain kita kan lurus. Okay, okay so uh, the road is uh, straight. Okay, so, uh, so that is why the linear dispersion. Okay, so linear dispersion of the pollutants. So the the concentrations of the pollutant inside the 
uh, the big environment where is my concern okay big environment okay in this case a basic canyon okay so ini bangunan-bangunan yang tinggi this is a roadway okay see that is a cd uh, concentration derived from the uh, vehicle cr plus, uh, which is a recirculating air plus cb from the background pollution Okay, so that is a concentration of the pollutants in urban street canyon. Okay, next slide saya agak slow lah untuk moving. Sekejap ya, Dr. Sofia. Okay. Ya, sekejap apa-apa. Okay, now we go to the Siren model. Okay, so Siren model. Uh, OSPM model that is a line dispersion model. For the Siren model, this is a box dispersion model. Okay, kenapa kita kata dia box dispersion model? We assume that one area as a box. Okay, it means that what is the uh, what is the concentration in? It is equal to uh, concentration out. Okay, and then in this area, there is a total of the uh, the sum of the uh, air pollutant concentration. Okay, the flow within each street is driven by the component of the external wind parallel to the street and the pollutant is assumed to be uniformly mixed within the street. Okay, it means that the kat dalam ni, in the box, there are a good mixings of the air pollutants because in this case, we assume stable layer of the air. Okay, okay so the three main mechanisms for the transport the uh, transport in and transport out of the street. First, the adventure along the street as is, okay, here. The dispersion in street intersection. Okay, so dekat sini, um, uh, we assume that the intersection at the junction, okay, so the dispersion occurs. Okay, kenapa intersection? Actually, I forgot to uh, inform you that this, this uh, paper conduct the research I mean the data collection at the intersection of the road. Okay, and then the last one, the transfer of the pollutants between street and overlying uh, atmospheres. Okay, so uh, that is a fossil model. And then the Klein model. Okay, so uh, Klein model that is uh, developed by the US EPA that is suitable for the highway and the arterial streets. So the assumption this is a design as the mixing zone and it's defined the region over the travel way uh, uh, plus three meters on either side mixing zone the turbulence mechanic uh, the mechanical turbulence created by moving vehicles and thermal turbulence created by hot uh, vehicle uh, exhaust okay so for the Klein model if you look at here it considered the uh, turbulence caused by the uh, uh, by the by the hot vehicle exhaust. Untuk OSPM dan juga uh, Siren models, they just only consider the mechanical turbulence created by the uh, vehicle movement. Okay, untuk Kelai model, it consider the thermal turbulence. Okay. So this, uh, so we go to the result and discussion. So this is a segment. Okay, so this uh, research actually divided uh, the road into four segments. So this is a segment one, segment two, segment three, and the segment four. Okay, so this is a uh, wind rose. Okay, wind rose of the. Uh, wind rules from the meteorological data. If you look at here, there are no uh, significant uh, changes of the wind direction. We can see that most of the uh, wind direction, it comes from the area, uh, south, uh, south area. Okay. And then, okay, so this is the model validation. Okay, so yang ini kalau you ingat tadi stage number four for the evolution processes, we can, we have to validate the model. So for the, uh, we can validate the model based on the performance measures. 
like the uh, abyssal fractional mean bias, FB and MSE and AB uh, fractions within uh, factor two, uh, MG mean bias, uh, mean variance and uh, coefficient, correlation coefficient by using the uh, percent correlation uh, coefficient. Okay, so if you look at here, the segment one, two, three, and four. Okay, so this is the data for the observed, I mean the collected uh, uh, collected uh, nitrogen outside. This is a traffic uh, behavior. Okay, temperature with speed and the wind direction. If you look at here, there are no, uh, if you look at to the mean, okay, there are no significant difference. There are no uh, large difference for the concentrations of the NO2. Okay, so uh, this is a, for the left side, that is a fixed uh, station and the roadside concentrations for NO2. Okay, so we can see that um, the roads, the measured concentration of the uh, NO2 is uh, higher than the fixed station. Okay, fixed station, I mean the built station. So I would say that uh, the fixed station, it cannot be captured. Uh, most of the, I mean, cannot be measured. Uh, uh, can't measure the, the actual uh, concentrations of NO2 precisely. Okay, so the measured NO2 higher than the uh, fixed stations. Okay, so measured NO2, this one we can, uh, it used the uh, portable instrumentation for uh, data collection. Bentar ya, saya hang lah. Ya, Patrick. Itu. Masih tidak moving ke next slide. Oh, okay. Nah, ini sudah sudah berubah kok. Ya, yeah. okay. So, uh, so for the left side, this is a uh, simulated in O2 concentration across the four different segment. Okay. So uh, the blue one is a line. <coughs> uh, green is a in situ measurement. Uh, yellow is our SPM model and the red one is a uh, red or purple color that is uh, for serial model. So if you look at here, the in situ measurement shows the higher concentration rather than the simulated uh, concentrations of NO2. Okay, so for the right side, okay, uh, if you look at here, we check, uh, okay, the, the, not we, the, the research, okay, uh, check the validations of the model, the performance models. Okay, so <coughs> if you look at here, uh, for SPM model, okay, mostly it has a good correlation to the uh, to the NO two rather than uh, rather than uh, serine. Okay, if you look at here, most of the piston correlation is negative correlation with the uh, NO2 concentration. Okay, so this is a, a model performance across various wind speed and the wind direction. Okay, so if you look at here, Uh, FB for uh, OSPM is higher uh, rather than line and the serine. Okay, and then uh, table six comparison of model performance with 10 PPP precision. Okay, so uh, I would say that the all uh, the curl line uh, the OSPM uh, is precision more precision rather than curl line and serine. Okay, so for the Saya pergi agak laju sikit ya, sebab kita ada satu lagi case study. 
Okay, so for the conclusion for this journal, serial model, it is the most contrasted performance on the segment with and without building on both sides, which is the serial model, it shows it very sensitive to the build environment. OSPM model, it is um, slightly better sensitive to the build environment than Kali model. And that none of the three models exhibit consistent performance across the segment or across wind speeds and the directions. Okay, now we go to the case study number two, which is um, recept uh, okay, receptor model. For the receptor, for the receptor model, okay, uh, it is a mathematical or statistical procedures for identifying and quantifying the sources of air pollutants at a receptor location. Normally, for the uh, receptor model, we collect the data at the receptor. <coughs> Receptor means that uh, a uh, residential area or a school. Okay, so um, uh, the method adalah, uh, we can use a, a positive matrix factorization method and also chemical mass balance MB models. Okay, so um, this is a genomes uh, that related to the. Uh, that, re that related to the receptor model. Okay, heavy metals pollutions of road dust in a city and its highly polluted suburb, quantitative source apportionment and source specific ecological and health risk assessment. Okay, normally for the source apportionment, we can refer to the PFM uh, method, which is a uh, positive uh, uh, matrix factorizations. Okay, so this is the abstract. Okay, so for the source specific ecological risk assessment, it used uh, uh, an IRI. An uh, uh, IRI and uh, I forgot what is the end, uh, Nugent uh, or something like that, Integrated Risk Index, PMF, uh, that is a positive metric factorization. And then this one for the uh, Monte Carlo uh, simulation for the health risk assessment. Okay, so for the objective of this paper, to assess the heavy metal pollution of road dust. And then number two, to apportion the overall sources of heavy metals by using the PMF model. Number three, to assess the source specific ecological risk by using the uh, recently developed ecological risk index and IRI. And then number four, to assess the source specific health risk by integrating PMF model output into Monte Carlo simulation based health risk assessment. Okay, so number four ini maksudnya menggunakan data from the PMF as the input for the uh, for the Monte Carlo simulation. Okay, so for the methodology, site selection, sample collection, uh, and then pollution level and the ecological risk assessment. Next is uh, we use the PMF model, and then number four we use the Monte Carlo model for identifying the human health risk assessment. Okay, so for the result and the discussion. Okay, so if you look at here, cuprum, okay, cuprum, it shows the very high enrichment. Okay, so um, uh, in this case, uh, this paper also consider the EF, enrichment factor. Okay, so the enrichment factor yang tinggi di sini adalah cuprum, okay, for uh, uh, urban, suburban, okay. And then this one for the uh, ecological uh, contributions of various sources in the air, ecological and the uh, and the B for health risk related to the heavy metal pollutions uh, of root dust in the uh, study area. Okay, so uh, so this is the. 
uh, table two shows the deterministic health risk assessment result. Okay, so here has a question based on the uh, injection, has a question based on the inhalation, has a question based on the dermal absorption. Okay, so if you look at here, yeah, for the hazard caution uh, injection can be the highest uh, uh, value. Okay, it will say that, okay, sebagai contoh ya, di sini, child for the urban uh, arsenic, okay, uh, for uh, injection, okay, three, uh, 0 0.37, uh, based on this channel, uh, it stipulate that uh, probably okay uh, the child mereka suka main-main and then mungkin uh, makan without a proper hygiene so the pollutants can be you know uh, residue on the hand surface uh, and then you know bila dia makan kanak-kanak makan so dia akan makan sekali the you know, uh, without without hygiene, uh, hygiene step being proper, so uh, uh, so consequently, they also ingest the uh, root dust. Okay, so that is a uh, based on the comment from the journals. Okay, so for the conclusion for this channel. The level of uh, heavy metal pollution in the suburb was far higher than uh, the urban region. The main sources of the heavy metals in the urban and the suburban regions were uh, lithogenic uh, sources and the traffic emission. And then uh, the ecological risk in both regions was mainly attributed to the industrial and the construction activities. Uh, the sources specific health risk assessment show that the lithogenic sources and the uh, uh, traffic emission had main contribution in the health risk in urban and the suburban regions. Okay, lithogenic sources means that the minerals uh, sources, okay, uh, does. Uh, uh, you know, mineral uh, sources. Okay. <clears throat> and then, okay, we have uh, 12 minutes. The case study number uh, three uh, and evaluations of the photochemical air quality modeling using CMAX in the industrial area uh, in Chile. So the objective, uh, the evaluations of the CMAX model performance at the industrial area and the estimations of the contributions of the emission sources. Okay, so yang ini menggunakan photochemical air quality modeling. Okay, so CMAX that uh, is developed by the US EPA. Okay, so if you remember that the photochemical modeling is suitable for the long range transportation of the uh, of the pollutant uh, for example for the macro scale uh, transportation of the pollutants okay so for that uh, genomes uh, it simulate the meteorological uh, data by using the wrf wrf model emission inventory simulation by using the smoke model and then photochemical simulations by using the CMAX model. And then they evaluate the model performance, which is the statistical model. Okay, so for the model performance, it's actually similar to the previous journals. Okay, normally we can, uh, uh, the journals explains about the fractional bias, uh, index of agreements of the, of the, of the software.
Okay, so this is uh, the result and the discussions from the journals. Okay, so this is a uh, PM10 concentration. Uh, <clears throat> if, you, if you look at to the red uh, line, that is a simulated uh, concentration. <coughs> and then the black one, that is a uh, observed uh, concentration, means that the measured concentrations of the pollutants. Okay, so this one that is a PM10, this is a PM2.5. Okay, so this is for uh, ozone and this is a for uh, nitrogen dioxide concentration. Okay, so if you look at uh, to the PM10 and the PM2.5, most of the uh, observed concentrations of the pollutants are larger than the simulated uh, <coughs> simulated concentration and then whereas uh, for the uh, ozone and the NO2 the uh, simulated uh, concentrations of the pollutants are higher than the uh, higher than the collected concentrations of the pollutants okay sebab so, kalau kita tengok dekat sini yang color merah which is the simulated data adalah lagi tinggi daripada uh, data, I mean the measured concentrations of the pollutants. Okay, so this is the effect of uh, industrial, uh, industrial <coughs> sources. Okay, and so here this is a effect of industrial and RWC sources. I'm oh, sorry, I forgot what is the RWC sources in the simulated concentration. Okay. So this is a PM10, PM2.5, and this is ozone. Okay. And then for the conclusion, it is desirable to consider more data from observation to achieve better meteorological performance and reduce the biased meteorological effect in the air quality. The simulation with the industrial emission show the impact of these sources in the non attainment with significant reductions of the PM concentration. And then the residential heating combustion emission generated more impact in the urban location, where the highest emission from these sources were estimated by the local environmental uh, authorities. Okay, so for the overall con uh, conclusion, uh, the air pollution modeling is actually, uh, you know, uh, it is uh, beneficial for the uh, environmental risk assessment. We can determine, um, we can use air pollution modeling to predict or to forecast the uh, air pollution concentration in a specific area or in a specific uh, time or projection time. And then based on that, we can, uh, you know, we can um, propose uh, the control measure we can check the compliance to the air quality standards and then based on it, it can, uh, we can also predict what is the risk to environment and also to the human uh, health based on the exposure. Okay, uh, that's all from me. Baik, terima kasih Ibu uh, Daya ya. Bagi uh, adik-adik yeah. yang ada, mau ada pertanyaan, silakan. Raise hand atau uh, melalui kolom chat juga bisa. Ini uh, saya tidak tidak explain di kelas ya. Jadi kalau ada pertanyaan mumpung ada Ibu Dayah nih, bisa ditanyakan gitu. Uh, Jakarta menjadi uh, number two ya. Dapat. <laughs> ya. Apa namanya? Ya, Jakarta, Jakarta become the second worst, kalau nggak salah ya. Bu Ania, second worst air pollution. In the world. First, first is uh, India, right? India or China? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I forgot. India or China. Second is Jakarta. So yeah, really? Yes. <laughs> after after COVID, it's become <laughs> the second. Then yeah. Oh. Jadi, um, ayo siapa so, yang mau bertanya? Mumpung nih loh. Betul, Sofia. Lepas ni siapa yang mau sambung uh, belajar ataupun specialist expertise boleh lah more on air pollution. Yeah. 
okay. ini tadi kita yeah. udah discuss sama Ibu Ani mungkin nanti kita akan kolaborasi deh ya ya yeah, ya yeah, insya Allah <laughs> yeah. kita ini ya, ya mungkin uh, menunggu, saya menunggu ini. yang uh, akan bertanya saya, saya boleh, boleh ya, ya. Ya, uh, saya minta maaf kerana hmm. saya tak dapat explain detail for each case study because oh, of yeah. a limitation of time. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <coughs> kan kalau di model lain itu, uh, we need complete data. data. Yeah. Uh, in case of Indonesia, Indonesia Sometimes we don't have uh, so much data. Is it still possible to make uh, model? Uh, okay, uh, actually yes. What kind of the data? I mean, uh, not evolution, evolution data. data. Evolution data. Hmm. Okay, um, basically, uh, if you... We have a satellite, hmm. right? Yeah. Yes. So yeah. So basically, uh, satellite data, uh, it can capture. We can use uh satellite data. I mean, uh, data that captured by the satellite. Yeah. So uh, based on that, uh, we can extract the data, and then we can uh use it as a uh, uh, input data. Oh. Okay. Uh, as long as we have. Uh, the yeah, yeah. So, so we can estimate, estimate the data from the satellite. Yes. Sebab uh, saya rasa uh, setiap negeri sekarang based on the satellite data, we will get the data. I mean the evolution data. Yeah. Eh, yang lain ada pertanyaan? Oh, saya, oh, saya tanya, tanya ya. Saya sebutkan namanya dan wajib bertanya. Jadi <laughs> saya mau bertanya. Nanti materinya keluar di ujian ya Bu Sepia ya? Oh iya pasti. Keluar di ujian. Siapa? Uh, mungkin Mbak Isna ini Hidayati. Tolong dinyalakan karena kameranya. Ini kelemahannya online seperti ini. Ya sama juga seperti saya. <laughs> Oke okay, Mbak Putri Regina Mawardi. Mawardi. Marwadi. Silahkan bertanya. Ayo, Mbak Putri, Putri Regina. Tuh, ini? Tadi ada orangnya. Silakan. Mbak Ivan Kariski. Ya, silakan bertanya. Uh, Oke, bahasa Indonesia bahasa boleh. boleh. Oke, okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi uh, Jadi pertanyaan saya singkat saja. Uh, in Malaysia, what kind of modeling is often used to control hmm. air pollution? Hmm. Itu aja. In Malaysia, what, what the latest? Is, uh, apa? Uh, but the most used, yeah. Most yeah, used uh, air, air pollution model. In, in Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, based on my knowledge, uh, in Malaysia, uh, it's actually uh, the Department of Environment control for the evolution. Okay, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, for the evolution, Basically, they rely on the actual actual concentration uh, for the air pollution modeling. Uh, mostly, uh, it's actually uh, used by the you know institutional uh, educational institution 
to do the research. Yeah, but um, I think Emot, Emot, that is Emot. a very uh, yeah Emot. Emot, that is a very commonly common, used. yeah, commonly used. In fact, as I mentioned before, yeah, di Johor baru pada tahun 2018 ada hazardous release. Um, the University of Te uh, Technology Malaysia they um, collaborate with the Department of Environment to use Emot and then to simulate the dispersions of hazardous release. Yeah, I think MOT. But it's actually depends on the, the need. Of. The, yeah, the purpose. What is the purpose of the modeling? Yeah. Uh, for the, that is uh, air pollution modeling. We have another emission model. Uh, we have another modeling, which is the em uh, emission it's modeling. modeling. That one we can determine the in, uh, emission inventory. For example, for the stack emission from the industry. So there are specific uh, emi uh, emission uh, emission modeling, and then based on that we can predict what is the uh, emission inventory. Emission inventory that is a uh, very uh, important. Uh, because you know, uh, uh, for each country, uh, uh, for each state, yeah, sorry, in Malaysia, for each state, they have uh, the industry need to submit the emission emission inventory to the Department of Environment for every year. Okay, so memang compulsory lah, especially for the uh, large industry. Mereka perlu hantar data. I mean the emission uh, inventory data to the, the uh, to the Department of Environment. In fact, uh, Malaysia saya tak ingat ada satu society ataupun international uh, agreement. Saya tak tahu. Saya, bukan saya tak tahu. Saya tak ingat what kind of the international agreement di mana uh, setiap negeri uh, setiap negara perlu menghantar uh, emission inventory data uh, for years, for every years, kepada society, uh, kepada international uh, yeah, agreement okay. tersebut. Kalau tak silap saya, Montreal Protocol. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. If I'm not mistaken, um, Montreal Protocol. Hmm. Baik, ada lagi pertanyaan? Saya random lagi. Mbak Ajeng Zahra Afifa, silakan bertanya Mbak. Ini cuma fotonya aja, ya tidak on cam. Oke yang lainnya tolong ya on on cam ya. Ya Mbak Ajeng, silakan bertanya. Halo, Mbak Ajeng Zara Afifa, bisa dengar suara saya? Ibu Ani mau bertanya? Ya, yeah, oke. Okay. Maybe okay. I have one question. Oke. Okay. Uh, I'm interested in you said before uh, in the early in the early slides, I think. You mentioned something about uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, step of risk assessment is uh, one one part of the uh, one of the phase is communication communication yeah. and you mentioned uh, one uh, example from Petronas so Petronas uh, communicate with the community surrounding the the in uh, I mean the the area I mean the their operation area about yeah. the uh huh and uh, how is it how is it the acceptance from the community is there any problem i mean uh, rising from this uh, kind of uh, i'm not really sure about that uh, response but mm -hmm. uh, uh, any comments from the residential people so mm -hmm. they will take note uh, the 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 comments from the people from the mm -hmm. public mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. So in 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 Malaysia, is it also uh, how to 
uh, accommodate the community into, if you, let's say you have uh, one, uh, one project, for example, or one activity that mm -hmm. is uh, potentially release uh, pollution yeah. to environment. Uh, so how, uh, is there any mechanism uh, in Malaysia to accommodate the community into whatever it is in the uh, policy, uh, let's say policy or regulation to how to, uh, to control uh, the possible uh, uh, negative impact of this one factor, particular yeah. activities. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Ani. Uh, in Malaysia, we have a regulation which is the uh, Environmental Quality Act 1974. Uh, mm -hmm. Under the EQA Environmental Quality Act 1974, there are there are uh, order uh, for I mean uh, environmental impact assessment order, which is uh, okay. If you look at if we look, uh, look at to the environmental impact assessment order, there are a few. There are not a few. There are a list of the uh, project. Okay, project for example, uh, uh, for example, the con uh, construction uh, project for a few hectares. I forgot about mm -hmm. the, the hectares. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for the, for example, another examples like a chemical or extensions of the chemical production. So mm -hmm. we have in regulation, we have a specific characteristics of the, uh, of uh, characteristics of the industry or any activities. Okay, so these activities or uh, or this industry, okay, if we want to conduct, if we want to develop the the activities, we have to conduct the environmental impact assessment. Okay, okay. so that mm -hmm. is uh, so based on that, we we get the uh, we can know the 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 severity, what is the impact to the environment. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, so any any uh, activities which can cause the CV impact. So we need to conduct the detailed environmental impact assessment, DEIA. Mm. Okay, rather than uh, environmental impact assessment yang biasa. Uh, okay. <coughs> okay, so DEIA, that one, so it needs a public uh, comments. Okay. Yeah, mm. that needs a public comments. It also need to submit to the uh, the the DOE state uh, state DOE uh, federal. I mean the Department of uh, Environmental. The, uh, I mean mm -hmm. the Director General of uh, DOE mm -hmm. to get the approval. So based okay. on yeah. So from that we can determine is that project can uh, can proceed can be start. Mm -hmm. Or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see. Mm. I see. Okay. Okay. I think it's, it's similar in Indonesia, right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe that's it. Okay. One, One more, more question. question. Yeah. yeah. Mas Raihan Dami Siregar. Oh, yeah. Putri Regina, uh, Bu, maaf. I want to ask about the need for APM points about hazardous release regarding to emergency response planning. The question is about how to do what the planning and what things are most considered. Terima kasih. Sekali lagi, the, the question again. Uh, daya mungkin bisa baca di chat ya. Ya di chat saya tidak ada. Oh tidak ada oh, saya. Huh. I want to ask about the need for APM points about hazardous release regarding to emergency response planning. The question is how to do that planning and what things are most considered point apm point what is the action right yes action and the consideration point i mean the yes. consideration factor yes okay so of course when we talk about the hazardous release 
first of all, we have to know what is the toxic compound. What is the toxic level of the of the hazardous? I mean, the chemical itself. Okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, one of uh, method uh, for hazardous release adalah aloha. Saya tak ingat aloha itu apa nama panjang dia. Okay. But then it's uh, also uh, one of the uh, dispersion model that specifically for hazardous uh, hazardous uh, compound okay so um, after we uh, determine the impact uh, affected area okay so normally based on the simulation we can know the radius of the of the affected area okay so uh, action Okay, what is the action? So we uh, uh, we can uh, in Malaysia. Okay, we have a Majlis Keselamatan Negara. Okay, that is related to the emergency situation to uh, like uh, ERP. Okay, sebagai contoh uh, yang berlaku pada tahun 2018. Masa tu memang hektik di Malaysia ya, tentang ya, hazardous release, uh, hazardous dumping, illegal dumping into the uh, Sungai Kim Kim. Okay, masa itu uh, Majlis Keselamatan Negara, uh, they take action okay, to evacuate uh, the people from the affected area. Okay, and then uh, so, so uh, they are uh, ERP after after evacuate the people so uh, we need to tweet yeah we need to uh, because if you look at to the sungai king king uh, the people uh, they dump the hazardous release in uh, hazardous into the uh, river so one of the uh, action taken by the government is to treat or yeah to treat or to clean up the river uh, from the hazardous release uh, from the hazardous materials okay so what that is one of the action uh, when the emergency happen okay next uh, okay uh, ERP is actually a huge topic okay uh, contoh uh, di dalam uh, bidang saya we have one subject uh, special for ERP okay so when we talk about the uh, emergency uh, response plan Okay, sebagai contoh hazardous release. So we have all, we also have to consider the post uh, ERP. Okay, so contohnya uh, kalau uh, emergency happen, probably akan ada uh, you know people die. So it will reflect to the emotional. So that is a post post uh, emergency response plan. Uh, post emergency response action. Okay, so actually there are many, you know, many steps need uh, <coughs> for the ERP. Okay, so that, that is action. Satu lagi apa ya? Soalan Dr. Sofia? Uh, <coughs> saya... Yang tadi uh, action... Kita lebih 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 lebih. Uh, okay, so, uh, what things are most considered? Okay, so what things are most considered? First one tadi, saya dah inform, we have to know the level uh, of the... Uh, chemical itself ataupun hazardous uh, per, uh, hazardous material itself okay sama ada sebagai contoh adakah okay, I give an example like a benzene benzene release okay so as we know the benzene that is one of the carcinogenic compound okay so uh, first of all we have to classify we have to identify uh, the the level of uh, toxicity uh, or hazardous of the chemical itself. Itu yang penting. Sama, kita nak tengok sama ada chemical yang release tersebut adalah berbahaya kepada kesihatan and environment or not. Yeah, that's all. Baik, terima kasih Ibu Dari. Uh, cukup jelas, jelas ya Mbak Regina ya? Regina. Uh, she has a problem with the uh, mic, so she can ask that directly. 
Oke, ada, ada lagi pertanyaan? Baik, kalau tidak ada lagi, mungkin kita cukupkan kuliah ya, tamu hari ini. Uh, saya sampaikan terima kasih yang sebesar-besarnya untuk uh, Dr. Nur Hidayah. Ya. Semoga tidak bosan sharing ilmu ke kami ya. ya. In the future. Ya, uh, ya. Ya. Terima kasih Ibu buat ada yang sudah join, join uh, kuliah tamu hari ini. ini. Uh, Ibu Ani juga. Uh, Mudah-mudahan apa yang kita lakukan hari ini bermanfaat uh, dan jadi berkah untuk kita semua. Untuk, baik untuk ma ma mengakhiri kuliah tamu hari ini, uh, mari bersama-sama membaca Alhamdulillah. 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 Uh, dan saya tutup ya uh, kuliah tamu hari ini. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ya silakan.